Hey, it's Philip from uh, Audio Excellence. Um, we've got more used junk here. It just all came in. No, this is all really good stuff and uh, we can go through it. Um, so at the top of the list, we have two Jadi pieces. There's a, uh, what is this? JPL preamp. Mm -hmm. There is the DPMC phono preamp. And there's the matching uh, DEFI 7, or D5, but DEFI 7 uh, power amp. Jerry, what's the power rating on this amp? I believe it's 100 watts. 100 watts, tube watts. As you can see, there's a lot of tubes in here, six power tubes per cha uh, channel. It actually comes with a special power cord. Um, it's in the other room in the bag. Um, so additionally, more Sonic Frontiers equipment. Yay. Yay, this is a Sonic Frontiers Line 1. There's the cute little remote that they all come with. Um, this has been serviced just recently, so this is tip-top in shape. Here's a Line 2 with the more rare black face. Um, everything works great on this. And the power supply, the little power supply for it. That's also been recently kind of redone. Uh, I believe there's some spare tubes with it. Um, yeah, it's a really fabulous preamp, two preamp, not too expensive. It will be listed soon or maybe it already has been listed. Conrad Johnson Premier 4, an oldie but a goodie. Jerry, what's the power rating on this? I believe it's 100 watts as well. 100 watts, pushing it pretty harder or much harder than the Jadi. As you can see from the power tubes in here, there's uh, four per side. Um, and those are, I think, in the EL34s? I believe so. Um, here's a rare, rare amp amplifier. This is a Luxman from 3600. And I believe, Jerry, it's been modified. Yeah, so the tubes are the U6550s. Mm -hmm. Originally, they came with uh, proprietary tubes proprietary tubes which you cannot get anymore because they're Japan market only and they're like from long 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 time ago. Do you, do you remember the time frame for this amplifier? No idea. No idea. Uh, this would be probably oh more than 30 years old um, in that range um, and they don't make anything like this anymore. Should we do speakers next? Let's sure. do speakers next. All right. So at the top of the list here's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, Proac Response 3.5, fairly easy to drive, really spacious sound. Um, this is a really good speaker for someone looking for, you know, a full range product that without having to spend too much money. Um, is that transparent? Well, this is polypropylene. Mm. Um, so this is pretty popular with English speakers from a certain time period. Obviously, the one-inch soft dome. Right. And as you can see here, well, no, we're not, we're not listing the Destiny's Trial, but this is what Jerry likes to no, listen no, no. to. Yes, 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 yes. So what we have here, there's a pair of Spender 8.3s, really mint shape in the cherry. Um, this is a, a really good little speaker with really hard to take off grills. Looks great. We have PMC, what are these? Uh, these are called TB2Is. And it's also another interesting little speaker, more of the British style. As you know, this has a much larger driver than this one, but I believe this has more bass, this speaker here, the Spender. Oh, I really like here. PMCs. Sounded PMC, great. yeah, these are these are really fabulous. PMC is uh, um, a brand that we've carried in the store before in the past, and um, that you know we know we know the distributor quite well. These are these are always going to be highly recommended. Here we have a pair of AR three A's. What are those? These are like the original, one of the original, uh, what they would call a bookshelf speaker, back in the day. 
So this is a sealed box. Massive bookshelf. <laughs> it's a massive bookshelf, but everything else was like four times the size. So this would be considered a small speaker, and you could actually put this on a bookshelf. As you can see, the depth is not too great. So this is a sealed box. And at the time, um, well, in any case, it's, it's a classic. Right. Jerry, what do you think of these things? Look at, look, at, look at some of the vintage CD players we have. Here's an SL1200. Does it do Spotify? It doesn't do Spotify, but it'll play CDs. What are those? <laughs> Those're like the Tone Pro Pro. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a Tone Pro Pro. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. There's a good one, Destiny's Child, right? And then there's also Vincent Belanger. Um, Here's a Sony XA777ES, SACD player, multi-channel, and CD player. So, simple drawer, it'll do, I've tested it already and it, it plays pretty spectacularly. Um, below that, we have a CD303 from Philips. This is one of the original CD players. Um, that uses the original CDM4 me uh, laser mechanism. On a pivot arm? On a pivot arm, it's pivoted, yes. All right, immediately below this, we have a pretty rare piece, Bryston Active Crossover. This is a 10B, I believe, a 10B. Um, and below that, we have a Class A CAP80, which is a very nice, High current um, integrated amp. Um, this should be for less than a thousand dollars. Another interesting piece. This is a Marantz stereo amp. It's called the Model 15. Um, relatively high power for its day, which is probably early 70s. Um, we haven't tested this amp yet. What has come back from service, and this is a really nice piece, is a Macintosh MC7205. Um, I believe its rating is around five, cha uh, five channels at 125 watts or something like that. As you can see, all the meters are nicely lit. Um, so this is a chance to own classic Macintosh at a very good price and multi-channel, uh, which you can use obviously for your home theater. And that's it from Audio Excellence.